This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 1084 of Horse Tip Daily, your almost everyday morsel of entertaining helpful hints for horse folks, brought to you by Kentucky Performance Products. horse people coach jen here and thanks for tuning in to horse tip daily today's tip is an excerpt from the horses in the morning show horse health segment steve kraus from cornell university farrier program joins jamie to explain the different reasons a farrier heats horseshoes and then he also explains the different types of cracks that we might see in our horse's hoof wall and we'll get right to our tip after this from kentucky performance products she swallowed hard as they walked into the start box She could feel his muscles tense under her leg. Five, four, three, two, one. Have a great ride. She didn't have to ask. He galloped out of the box and across the field toward their first training level course. His ears pricked. Her heart pounded. He attacked each obstacle with confidence, clearing them with room to spare. A huge smile broke out on her face as she crossed through the finish flags. She leaned forward and buried her face in his neck. Their bond of love and trust blocked out all else. This love story is brought to you by Elevate. Research proven to have superior bioavailability. Elevate supplies the essential vitamin E often missing from the equine diet. Its all-natural formula supports healthy muscle and nerve functions. The horse that matters to you matters to Kentucky Performance Products. Call 859-873-2974 or visit kppusa.com to order today. Well, Steve, tell us a little bit about yourself. I know you've been on the show before, but I don't think I was on that episode. So tell us a little bit about yourself. You're you're the head of farrier services at Cornell. Yes, uh, it's the Cornell University Veterinary College. Um, We have a a program here that's... um, 100-year-old program, oldest in the country. Uh, we have a uh, farrier school here where we take a select number of, you know, four students per session to teach uh, farriers. We also teach veterinary students about chewing and horses' feet and lameness issues and so on. And we do all the farrier services for the university, which includes, you know, working on the horses that come into the veterinary hospital for lameness and injury. We do the uh, shoes for the Cornell equestrian team and the Cornell polo team and the um, uh, equine research programs here. So we maintain all these university-owned horses, um, which are practice horses for the students, and provide farrier services for horses in the region that come in with problems and so on. So mainly just troubleshooting and problem horses, no just regular shoeing outside of... Yeah, I mean, there's normal horses and there's not so normal horses. So you know, <laughs> we provide what we can, what services that are, are needed. Uh, most people, if they're going to bring a horse in here, are not bringing in the average horse. They're bringing in a horse with a problem. Um, but you know, we have more normal horses for the polo team, the equestrian team, and so on uh, that the students can work on. You know what this sounds like? It sounds like I needed to go to Cornell because, first of all, I could never get in. But second, uh, you've got a polo team and an equestrian team and all that at Cornell? Yes. Wow. How cool. How cool. And now I've got yeah, have a men, there's a men's there, There's a men's and women's polo team, and they are oh. currently the um, Northeast Regional Champions, and they will be going to the National Championships at the University of Connecticut in two weeks. Oh my gosh, how cool! But Jennifer, we need to we need to follow up on my producer Jennifer. We need to follow up on that and find out who's going to win that. that and that's awesome. I didn't even realize. So you guys are busy with all those polo ponies. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, now, we had a couple listener questions. We just wanted to talk a little bit about you know because you do shoe so many problem horses. Uh, a listener named Marcy wrote in with a question about what is a quarter crack? Why do racehorses get them so often? And are all cracks in the hoof wall a problem? All right. There, there's several parts to the answer to this. Uh, a, a quarter crack is a crack that is in the part of the foot that's called the quarter, which is usually 
the back third of the foot, and it's usually okay. a horizontal crack um, as opposed to a toe crack, which is right in the front of the foot. And so, you know, the, what we call it kind of defines where it is. Um, and most quarter cracks occur on the insides of horses that are base wide and towed out. Um, and if a horse is base narrow and, and towed in, they're going to occur on the outside towards the, the heel. So if you drop a plumb line down from the center of the horse's shoulder, especially on a base wide towed out horse, it'll come right where the quarter crack is going to be or is. So confirmation is, is a cause of, of quarter crack or imbalanced trimming and shoeing could be also a cause. Okay. So that, that's like one part of it. Um, uh, all cracks are not terrible. Um, sometimes they're surface cracks that are very superficial that have a lot to do with the, you know, uh, moisture changing of horses' feet. And you see some of these surface cracks that usually don't amount to much, but they should certainly be monitored. Um, but, a, a, you know, a, a real quarter crack where, which, which penetrates the whole wall can become infected, uh, can do damage, and, and that needs to be, you know, repaired and taken care of properly. Okay, okay. And um, do you suggest um, for, for the quarter cracks, but also just in general, hot chewing versus cold chewing? Uh, what What is the benefit to hot chewing versus cold chewing, or is there? Well, there's there's two parts to that now. There's um, we we teach that there's there's hot shaping of the shoes versus hot fitting. So one can work the shoes hot to get a better uh, shape, an easier way to shape it. Steel is, you know, easier to uh, shape and forge when it's hot. There are certain sh pre-made shoes that are heavy enough that you cannot um, shape them adequately cold, whereas light shoes can be shaped pretty easily cold. So depending on the kind of shoes the horse needs, um, some guys prefer to do all their shaping hot because it's easier on their wrist and elbow. Uh, some people don't have a forge to do it and they might use lighter shoes, so they're shaping cold, but if they do an adequate job of, of shaping the proper shape, the thing you cannot do cold is do some of the modifications that we do, like putting a roll toe or a square toe or a rocker toe or produce some side clips or any of the other standard modifications that we teach here that can only be done when the metal is hot enough to forge. So that's hot shaping. Then we get in a hot fitting where we actually have a shoe where we want to see if it uh, check how well it fits. Maybe we want to uh, have a we have a toe clip or a side clip. We want to burn a little place for it. So now we're touching that warm shoe to the horse's foot and we're causing a little smoke and sizzle, which some horses might object to. Um, but mm -hmm. it's amazing how many horses don't seem to bother if you don't go at it too hard. And the benefits of hot fitting is, number one, you can check your shape and then alter it while it's still hot, alter, alter the shoe while it's still hot. You also are getting a nice airtight flat fit because you're scorching anything that's still a little bit high and not flat, and you can see where you need to either rasp a little more hook away. And in very wet climates, you're going to be sealing up like almost like cauterizing the end of the horn tubules which are actually, you know, conducting water in and out of the foot. So you can actually tighten the foot up, especially in these wet climates. And in excessively dry climates, the feet are so hard, it's very hard to rasp to get a hot foot. But you can burn a nice flat foot on there. So in extreme climates, it's really useful. The other thing about the wet climates is there's a lot of fungi and bacteria and stuff that's around and you're going to kill all that stuff that's trying to grow and invade and deteriorate the horse's foot by hot fitting. So hot fitting is very useful if it's used appropriately. Okay, I've had horses for 30 years, and I have never heard an explanation that good about hot chewing. That's our job here is to, you know, define these things and teach them so that the students leave with a good understanding of what they're doing and not doing something just because they saw it in a book or saw it, you know, some, somebody else do it. The way you explained it, it's like you should work at a university and teach this stuff. Yeah. It's amazing.
And there you have it. You can find links to today's guests at horsetipdaily.com. Don't forget, you can have all of your favorite Horse Radio Network shows with you wherever you go by downloading the free Horse Radio Network app for iPhone or Android. Just go to your app store and search Horse Radio Network. You can also subscribe via iTunes. This podcast was made possible through the generous support of Kentucky Performance Products and listeners like you. You can learn how to become a supporter of the Horse Radio Network by going to horsetipdaily.com and clicking on the auditor's banner in the center of the page. The Horse Radio Network and the Horse Radio Network hosts are not responsible for statements of guests or their opinions. Use your own judgment when listening to the tips provided by the experts on Horse Tip Daily. (laughs) 